Hey, what's up? It's Rashad Antonio back. We are the Upon for the Review, and we are here today to celebrate the life of one of the most legendary Black Americans of all time, and that is one Quincy Delights Jones Jr. And I think it was 91 years old, man, passed away um, late yesterday on Mm -hmm. November the 3rd. And like, I think people don't really understand just how amazing Quincy Jones is. Yeah. The, um, the magnitude of what he's done is, is, is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And I don't think will ever, ever be replicated. No, 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 definitely not. Nah, there's, Um, there's, there's, there's no way. Um, I think the last time you and me we did like a musical episode was the Drake and Kendrick beef, and probably yeah, one yeah. of my favorite favorite episodes that we've done this year. But I just want to say something, man. As most of you know, or anybody who's heard this podcast, me and Rashad talks about that we are musicians. I am a saxophone player. Rashad is a multiple brass player, and we were met each other in the band at Norfolk State University. Um. So this hit different for me when it happened. And what makes me think about it was the fact that literally this weekend, I was thinking to myself, who are like my biggest musical influences? And probably top two was going to be Quincy Jones and one John Williams. Two legends. By the way, John Williams has a documentary on Disney Plus out now. I haven't seen it, but that is on my to-do list. But when this came down, I had just went into work this morning at the TV station, and then we have an older, we have an um, older young lady who's um, who's a director, and she was super Motown down and everything. And she's just like, I'm not in the mood right now for none of your BS, Tony, because I always go in there joking. She said, Quincy Jones died. I said, I beg your pardon? I said, when did this happen? She says, literally like 30 minutes ago. And I was like, like that kind of brought my whole day down from this point. But um, I feel like people know who Quincy Jones is, but a lot of people don't understand the impact that he had on the music industry as a whole. Quincy Jones is probably your favorite producer's favorite producer, favorite producer. Yeah. So much of his stuff has been sampled. Not just music stuff from just his albums and his discography or whatever, but also stuff that he's written for TV series, for movies. Um, I'm I'm going to play something real quick on my phone. It hurts me to see that a lot of fellow seniors are not aware of this completely free 3,200... This is very... (laughs) So, most of us know that sound from what movie, Rashad? Kill Bill. Kill Bill. That actually was <clears throat> sampled by f- sample because Quincy Jones wrote the theme music to this show called Ironside. And that was the sample they used for Kill Bill. So, Quincy Jones wrote that. Just, you know, the type of stuff you know. Um, also, season, if I'm not mistaken, four of the Cosby show when they do that. The big, the big, yeah, the big, yeah, the big theatrical. Yeah, yeah. yeah that big theatrical opening and everything. That was Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. Another, another TV show opening. Probably one of the most famous TV show openings in the 70s. Sanford and Son. Written by one Quincy Jones. Yep. A show from the 90s that me and Rashad grew up on. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. That was also Mm -hmm. produced by him. Produced by him, yes. So Quincy Jones crosses genres and everything. 
let's also talk about he did the score for the color purple, the yeah. original color purple in 1985 or whatnot. And what people, most people know him for probably would be people that are younger or so. He was the man that produced Thriller, the album Thriller for Michael Jackson. And it is, I'm going to go ahead and say it. People might get upset at me or whatever. It's pretty safe to say Quincy Jones basically saved Michael Jackson's career when he released Thriller. And the reason I say this is because Mike wanted Quincy, but the record label that Mike was under didn't want him to have Quincy. They felt Quincy was too jazzy because Quincy Jones has a jazz background. He was an extraordinary trumpet player. He's been touring since he was like, what, 15, 16 years old, Rashad? Yeah, or something like young, that. Yeah. Right. He was like best friends with Ray Charles. And, you know, you see a scene of that in the movie Ray, but they don't really go into that, their friendship. He also. Yeah, he, yeah, he was a, um, the band leader for Lionel Hampton. So. Yes. He was yeah. also a member of like Count Basie's orchestra, yeah. orchestra and stuff. Uh-huh. So, so this man had a thing. Another um story that I found out today was that um he used to he played trumpet. He was in the Ed Sullivan Show band, so he was in the band when Elvis Presley had his first television debut as a background uh-huh. trumpet player. But going back to what I was saying about Michael Jackson, Michael wanted. Quincy Jones because he wanted to change his sound uh, because the record labels wanted to keep him straight up R&B because if you listen to Off the Wall to Thriller two completely different yeah. gen- genres and, that, and that's what made Quint I think might go from being just an R&B artist into pop into a pop artist right there with that and he produced Mike's um, he produced Thriller he, he, he produced Thriller, he produced um, and Bad. Those are the two albums from Mike that he was the main producer on with that. And I think he had some production too on Off the Wall as well. So Quincy, man, is 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 that dude. And I could just go on and on, but Rashad, what you what you got to say, man? Yeah, like another thing that he, of course, did was um was kind of forge relationship with him and um and, and, and Mike was the Wiz. You, know you can't so, win. Yeah, so you know, Mike was like, "Yo, we need some producers," and Jones was like, "Yeah, you know what I'm saying." And then also, like you said, help produce some off the wall too. So that's it, it's it's just a, a like a lot, and it's also like a lot of okay. Not only was he a, a music producer and a, a TV producer, but he also was a composer and arranger of music. So. There's a lot of people who who okay. If you if you if you're a composer, that means you're a person that makes some music. If you're an arranger of music, that means you are the person that makes all the parts for everybody. And he did that. And there's just a lot of stuff that Quincy Jones has done that is just so like under the radar. It's like he was one of those people that like you know like 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 Baba Yaga just in the background, just you know just there, and you don't even know he's there. Like just. <laughs> It's scary just how much that that, that he's had uh, um his he's had his hands him. into yeah because mm-hmm. like because even like um something like him his his thing with um he had with Universal with Quincy Jones Entertainment yep you know what I'm saying did the Fresh Prince of Bel Air mm-hmm. also produced in the house mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying he wow. even produced um the Jenny Jones show you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying also had a hand in Mad TV. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot of stuff that he was doing that his money was was being poured. He's pouring his money into, and was getting all the stuff back on, on on like the back end. You know what I'm saying? And also too, the composer of "We Are the World." <sighs> yeah, if it wasn't for Quincy Jones, none of the people that came out. Nope. There was like maybe like 60, 50, 60 people mm-hmm. who are stars in their own right. Mm-hmm. came to that joint. You know what I'm saying? There was a it was like an award show going on at the same time. He brought everybody mm-hmm. out there to do that. Like there's just a lot of stuff that um that that this man did that is just, so just amazing. I just, I just want to go through a few songs and stuff that are his producing credits. Um 
another part of me, Michael Jackson. Uh-huh. This song I didn't know that he produced. Patty Austin and James Ingram, "Baby Come to Me." <laughs> I didn't know that either. Of course, "Bad," the song by Michael Jackson, "Beat It," Billy Jean. Um, from the from the Wiz, "A Brand New Day." Can you feel a brand new day? That's Quincy. Possibly one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs, "Dirty Diana." Um. Don't stop till you get enough. Um, Stevie Wonder song called "Get It," "Get on the Floor," Michael Jackson, "Girlfriend" by Paul McCartney. Produced that, "Human Nature." Um, it's my party. It's my party. And I cry if I want to cry wow. if I want. That is that is him. Um. Of course, one of my other favorite Michael Ballads, I Just Can't Stop Loving You. Um, song called um, uh, Liberian Girl, Look of Love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, My Town, My Guy. And you wrote The Look of Love? Yeah. Leslie, Leslie Gore song? The yeah, Look of Love, love is yeah. in your eyes. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Protection by Donna Summers. Of course, PYT, um, probably one of his most favorite, probably one of his most famous um, R&B songs that came out in the late eighties, nineties. Secret Garden. Yeah, that is a um, yeah, that, that's an R&B uh-huh, banger yeah. right there. Yeah, um, um, Stomp by the Brothers Johnsons. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, Strawberry Letter Twenty Three. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. I did not know that. Yo. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Sun, sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Um, a song in the 90s that me and Rashad know. This is probably our generation as well. Tomorrow, A Better You, A Better Me with Tevin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was he was in that video. Yeah, he was in that video. Yeah, um, that's... Yo, yo, that's crazy. That's a crazy memory, right? I remember being, like, first grade... And we had to sing that song for like for like the um, chorus class. I think all of us in that I think all of us in that age category had to. Yo, that song, yeah, it's that song is it's such a good song, yo. Mm-hmm. That song is so good, man. Like yeah. just the progressions in that song and like the ending. It's mm-hmm. what's the really hell out of that song, yo? Yeah, let's see. The Woman in Me by Donna Summers. Um, you can't. Um, of course, you can't win. And songs like you put and one of my favorite R and B songs that he wrote featuring Tamia, you put a move on my heart. These are songs that he like that he produced. That's not even talking about like songs he had anything to do that he wrote with. Um Chump Change is a Quincy Jones song. This song was his son was the writer for it, but he did put some, he did have some input on it. Rashad, you might fall out when I tell you this. LL Cool J, backseat on my Jeep. Swing an episode, backseat on my Jeep. Uh huh. Daydreaming by Harry Styles. What? Uh huh. Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. Yeah. Um. Good Life with Kanye. For yeah, because of the PYT. Yeah, yeah, PYT yeah, stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Um, in the heart of the, excuse me, in the heat of the night. In the heat of the night. Ray Charles. There's you know, a show going on. Yep. Grandma used to love that joint, y'all. Yeah, man. Uh, Mrs. Seely's Blues from Color Purple. He wrote that. They call me Mr. T. They call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> so she wrote the sister. With, uh, yeah, wrote that. Um, um, Look at what I said, Sanford and Son and Self Preservation of Society. It's so much more stuff. I just had to get that out the way. But me and Rashad probably have our affection for Quincy Jones for his actual composing and his jazz come piece, um, jazz pieces that he wrote. That yeah. Me and him both played some of that stuff while we were at Norfolk State in the band there. Probably the one of the first songs that he wrote. Well, not that he wrote one of the first songs that we played that was written by him. 
turn on the action. Good God Almighty. Great song. You know, another great song, Razzmatazz. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, you um God, um, um, God, I can't pronounce it in Spanish. Ana Conaria, um, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, Ana Carrera. Yeah, Ana Carrera. So, like I said, man, Quincy has touched so many people. And and when people ask me, like, who are my musical influences, I always come up with, like, the same five people. And that is Quincy Jones, um, John Williams, Prince, Stevie Wonder, and the last person, very problematic, but producing wise and writing, composing and writing wise, a genius. And that would be one Robert Kelly, but I might have to scratch that because of his checkered yeah. past. Yeah, but, I know. Like, my fifth would be like Kanye West, but like, I mean, you know, he's this, yeah. I mean, it's like somebody tell me the favorite artist is James Brown. I'm like, you know, right, you know, just... so. so <laughs> So, yeah, so, you know, the people that are watching this that don't really know a lot about Quincy Jones, you know of them, but you really don't know any deep, man, just go on a go on a musical journey, man, and just listen, man. Like, I think one of my favorite Quincy albums is Juke Joint, and that came out, if I'm not mistaken, like 94-ish, 95-ish, great, you know what I'm saying, great album. And, I mean, he, up until, like, the day he died, he's just been, you know, he passed away. He's just been someone musically 83 grammy nominations and he's won 28 grammys and i think he has six emmy nominations if i'm not mistaken either so yeah and and like even what was crazy right like this was reading some of this stuff is fact that like early on he had like two he had two brain surgeries and Mm -hmm. and they told him like yo don't play trumpet no more because the force of playing an instrument is it's a lot of force on like your diaphragm, chest. And if you're playing a certain way, it can be a lot of impact on your brain. So um, yeah, and they was like, yo, you had to put a clip on in, in his brain, said, Man, don't play no more. I don't want it to come loose, you could die. You know, what he said, Man, I'm about to play. play anyway. And he almost died because the clip almost came loose. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he had, and then played trumpet again after that. And if you have something that you love, something that you've probably been doing since you was a kid, because most musicians start when they're young, and having to give that up, was, I know it was a very hard thing to do. So for after that, I know he just threw himself into like, you know, composing and arranging the producer. Yeah, man. So, you know, I'm a big proponent of it. I'm pretty sure Rashad is keep the arts in school, man, especially yeah. music, yeah. music and stuff, man, you know, and, you know, and, and, and I saw a post about this on social media um, the other day where, you know, you got parents are like, oh, I'm putting my kid in sports because I want them to go to college, get a scholarship to go to college. You're more likely to get a music scholarship or art scholarship than you are to get a sports scholarship. Just want to throw that little tidbit out there. For real, and there's and there's more places that offer that for your kid. You kid, especially if 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 you're if you're a black kid, you yeah. could you could easily parlay that into something very lucrative for you in, in yeah. the future. So, and then too, like the influence too, he he's had on hip hop, man. For real, like so many people, hip hop artists will tell you, like, yo, they just love Quincy. They sample so much of his stuff. I think one of my favorite. Quincy Jones moments was um, him just making an appearance in my favorite hip hop group of all time music video, Triumph, Wu Tang Clan, just sitting there at a the table with the rizzle, just just vibing it. I mean, because it's this, this is like the 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 magnitude of Quincy Jones, it it, it can't be understated. That's like telling that's, that's like when people tell you how huge Michael Jackson was. Mm-hmm. And just like I said at the beginning, Quincy Jones can't be replicated. The same reason that Mike that Mike can't rep, can be replicated. It's just the, I, mean, I hate to sound old, but it's just different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the like okay, <laughs> y'all mega star Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Taylor Swift, but that's who y'all mega star is. My 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 mega star was Mike Jackson. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, a black man 
with a skin disorder could go to the middle of Eastern Europe and have people fainting. Let me explain something to you, Rashad. When HBO had that Michael Jackson concert come on HBO like around, what, 93-ish or something like that, 92, 93-ish, that man came out there, every song, you saw like 10 people faint. That man performed at the Super Bowl and stood still for three minutes. And people were losing their mind. Never have you seen that again. But once again, that goes into Quincy Jones being kind of like a mentor, a musical mentor who helped take Michael to take what he had up another level. And then also Quincy also working with Prince on certain things as well, as well too. Quincy was the one that was trying to get all the collaboration that we all wanted, Mike and Prince. But you know, when you got two musical geniuses that have egos, sometimes stuff just don't work out, man. Yeah, man. Like, 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 and, and even like behind the scenes, Quincy was a person who was always making connections with people, mm-hmm. hooking people up, looking out. It's just he served as an uh, as an ambassador, just for for music. Period. Of course, there's a lot of pe- a lot of people who have a lot of um, negative stories in regards to, to Quincy, a lot of um, quote unquote controversy and some of his beliefs and stuff. But overall, when it comes to just who he is and musically and what he's done for, for, for black American music, I'm sorry for American music because black American music is, is, is American, American music because yeah. ain't no music in America without, without black people. His, his contribution Say it again for the people in the back, Rashad. Ain't no American music without Black Americans. It, it's his chunk. Is if this was a pie chart, he would have like eighty five percent of that pie. Yes, sir. And like, and I, and I know this may sound like a little bit, a little hyperbolic, but like, yeah. it, it, like I, I don't want it to be understated. I would have said this. I would have said this two days ago before he passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is not me just, you know, trying to wax poetic about a man who isn't here anymore. Like, I don't really do that. Yeah. So the, the fact that all these things that, that he's done is just, it's just a legacy that I don't know it, it could ever be matched, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, man. R.I.P. Quincy Jones, Jr. Man. Yes, sir. Just so, you know, the, the man. The man. So, you know, I just wanted us to do an episode to pay our respects to... You know, that man as the legend that he is. And, you know, we losing our greats, man. We really are. It's our greats. And like you said, it's a lot of stuff that, you know, I, like I said, I'm not trying to make it sound like we old or anything, but it's like, dang, who are, who would be people that are greats like that, that, you know what I'm saying, would affect us, you know what I'm saying, affect us the way that some of these kids are, you know what I'm saying, some of the younger folk are affected, and will they be able to reach the magnitude or that reach that some of these other great legends have done? <laughs> Across all genres, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know at all, man. But yeah, man, we appreciate y'all for hanging out with us on this one. We'll be back next Monday, The Penguin, episode Ate the finale of that series. Also, if you if you like stuff, if you, if y'all like stuff like this, yeah, comment below because we can talk about other stuff. We just, we more than just you know TV shows and movies. We 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 have a, a plethora of things that we like to um, comment on. But yeah. if there's gonna be no demand, then we don't need to you know give you no supply. Yeah. All right. Well, other than that, man, we see y'all next time. Peace.